All right, everyone. So I guess we're going to get started. Uh, I don't know if you know much about our campaign, but we're a new really group from Kwantlen, a uh, group called Tap In. And we're basically trying to persuade the councillors of the uh, city of Surrey to stop selling bottled water in all their uh, municipal buildings and facilities. So uh, tonight we got Harjap Hill from the Council of Canadians. He's the regional director of the PC and the Yukon chapters. So he's going to give a little talk here and kind of uh, inform us all on the issues. So without further ado. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, um, so like I said, my name is Harjap. I've um, been uh, working with the Council of Canadians for the three, um, about a eight months now, but I've been around the organization in terms of doing uh, collaborative work for quite a while. Um, one of the things I always like to do when I speak anywhere, um, especially in BC, is acknowledge the territories of uh, the Indigenous people here beforehand, um, just as sort of a grounding of all the work that we do in remembering sort of the struggles of people, like, the people that originally inhabited these territories. Um, and also wanted to start off a bit by just saying, um, from the sense I'm getting and a few folks that I've chatted with, um, sounds like most folks are not really good fans of bottled water. So uh, my presentation, I'm gonna try to pull some things out that I think still might be useful for folks to know. Um, probably go a little bit quicker than I normally would go. And also just uh, speak a little bit about, so one of the things that excites me about this campaign, so Council of Canadians for folks that don't know is an organization that's been around for um, getting close to 25 years now, um, and has worked on issues such as trade, energy, water, all sorts of issues. and. As folks may know, Maud Barlow, who's the chair of the Council of Canadians, is sort of infamously known as a champion for public, and not even public, but like water for the commons. It's the term of the commons from way back, uh, you know, 100 or so years ago, or even longer than that, that, you know, really talks about community control over your resources and uh, management. So, the thing that excites me about it is, is that we have all these campaigns, but the bottled water campaign specifically is one of those campaigns that is an opportunity campaign, which is what I call it, because it's not just about you fighting something, like, you know, the NAFTA struggle. I don't know if folks know about the, the campaign against the North American Free Trade Agreement, but really that campaign was about fighting against NAFTA, and you were like, okay, we just gotta stop this thing, this behemoth that is gonna destroy all sorts of things. Um, but with bottled water, it's like sort of like we're gonna make we're going to take ground, right? We're going to start fighting and taking back space and opening up doors and then, you know, talking about things that normally aren't on the table because as soon as you tell someone that we want to ban bottled water, um, people start asking questions like, what do you mean ban, bo ban bottled water? And then you have to start talking about society and how we live and what we do. So it's a, it's a great campaign in that way. That's why I sort of call this bottle, the bottle and beyond because it opens a lot of doors. And I'm going to start by, do you folks, well, take a guess at where this is. Some of you folks probably know, but what does that look like? An oil field? <coughs> oil field. In Alberta, um, where there used to be a boreal forest. Um, this is the infamous tar sands. Um, and I wanted to start off just by mentioning a couple of things about, like, just like to relate what we're going to talk about today. The tar sands are probably one of the worst projects in terms of protecting water on the planet. Um, for every barrel of tar sands oil that's produced, you need about three to five barrels of water just to produce one barrel of oil. And when you're using that water, you're basically um, producing huge toxic tailing ponds. Um, so just imagine, right, like, you know, just in BC, people want to transport upwards of I think a million barrels per day of tar sands oil. And you can just then think about, if that's just through BC, how much water is gonna be used in Alberta just to produce this oil. Um, and the reason why I bring it up is, is that these things are fairly important for the bottled water industry. When you wanna sell water, it's really good to not have clean water available. So the Athabasca River being destroyed sort of opens up a market for the bottled water company. Because you go to the communities and say, hey, you can't drink well, that water, so buy it from us, right? Um, okay. okay, and then this is a pool of water um, outside a Coca-Cola plant in Kerala, India. Um, I've been watching this for a long time um, just because I'm South Asian, follow a lot of um, South Asian politics, um, and there's been a massive campaign against Coca-Cola for a long time in all parts of India. 
And this is a watershed, like an agricultural community is getting toxic waste basically being dumped in their water resources, where they bathe, where they drink, where they use water for their agriculture. But there's resistance, which is what's great. People realize that water is essential, they need it, and they, and they fight back. And this is a, a group of amazing women, many of them um, had silent protests where they just sat outside of the Coca-Cola plant for days and days and days um, to basically have it shut down. Um, inspiring stuff. So the business of water, privatization, people sort of understand this, and sometimes you get the debate, right? So one of the things that I want to do today, like we're all opposed to bottled water, but certain things come up, like industry will say certain things, you go to municipal council and they'll be like, well, what about this, what about that? So I'm going to try to sort of work through some of these things. One of them is this issue of access. So, and, and one of the things that we need to be very clear about is that there's a very big difference between access and a right. When you talk about a human right, it means that it should be provided and equally available to everyone. When you're talking about access, it's like, I have access to buy a Porsche, but technically I can't buy a Porsche if I don't have enough money to buy a Porsche. There's a price to access. So you can ex access it, but it means that you're going to pay for it. And that's not really what we're talking about here when we're talking about water. So industry will always say, well, it's about access to water. We're making water, clean water, more accessible. But what we're talking about is, is that water is a human right. And when you're talking about it as a human right, you're not paying for your rights. Um, the second thing is, is that the private sector always wants you to believe that they're doing this for the good of the people. But really, as many of you probably know, the private sector isn't really about the people. It's obviously about them making a profit. And when we think about it, what we're, what we're realizing over time is, is that when you look at international markets and what's happening with borrowed water is, is that it's really about profit because companies are going all over the world, particularly in Canada, but everywhere that you can possibly go just to basically have control over the scarce resource and increasingly scarce resource. I'm going to go through, I'm not going to hit all the points just because I'm going to go a little quicker. I think you guys know a lot of this stuff. Different forms of privatization. Um, we're going to get into this a little bit later, but just so folks know, uh, public-private partnerships, which are basically bailouts for a company that might get involved. Um, so let's say a uh, water utility is owned by a public institution like your municipality or the provincial government. What will happen is, is that they will partner with a corporation that the corporation will provide services and the funding and the financing. And what that means is, is that the profit, the profit of the corporation will be guaranteed by taxpayers' money because they're basically putting, flipping the bill for the operation of the facility. Um, contracting out services is a common way that people start privatization. People have probably seen it with TransLink, um, that's slowly happening. And then just complete privatization. You have something and you just sell it to a private entity. Different forms of privatization. Um, this quote by Maud Barlow, I think, is fairly, makes it fairly clear about where we're at in terms of the globe. Perhaps in anticipation of the emerging water market, water entrepreneurs are hunting for new sources of water and buying up bulk water and water rights and holding them for future profit because people know it's the new oil. Um, all stuff that I'm sure you guys already know. Um, the bottled water industry. This, this is fairly important. Um, folks here fans of Gordon Campbell? <laughs> yeah? okay. I was unbelievably like furious when I was, um, you know, I worked on the Tar Sands for a long time before I joined the council, just doing some pop-ed pop in BC around the Tar Sands and its impacts in BC. And as I was doing this, I sat down at, at home one day and I was watching TV and I saw those ads about like, change your light bulbs, be a good citizen and you know, support the, a clean environment. And to me, it's this thing like, okay, so we're telling everybody to be green, change light bulbs, turn off your taps, but we never in an advertisement see them calling upon industry to do it. You never tell industry stop consuming so much water. You never tell industry to stop lighting up like, your buildings or like, you know, operating a mine with like about a thousand gigawatts of power every day. We don't talk about that. We always talk about the individual going home and being like, change the light bulb and that's really going to make the difference. Well, we know it's not. And in the case of water, as you can see, 80% of the water use in Canada is in the industrial sector. And with the expansion of the tar sands, which is one of the biggest industrial projects on the face of the planet, um, that's only going to increase. So I put always remember the person. <laughs>